Hey there, Dengar Stu here. Today's video is about diagnosing a battery that's gone flat and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. There are plenty of reasons why a battery can go flat, you know, ranging from leaving the lights on through to the battery itself being dead and not able to hold a charge. In this video though, we're going to look at a particular boat that had this problem and diagnose what's going on with that boat. Good morning. I'm on the 70 horsepower that we welded up in a previous video. And next job for me is to put some lights in, but I noticed the battery had gone flat, which is odd because it's a new battery. It's very rare that you buy a battery that's not fully charged because it's best to store them that way. So we're going to do a little bit of diagnosis and see perhaps what's going on. This battery has been on a mains charger overnight. So I'm just going to quickly check the voltage now. Uh, then we're going to have a look at whether it's charging from the outboard, whether the regulator rectifier is working. Because sometimes when they fail, they can also draw current. Then we're going to take the uh, negative or the positive off, doesn't matter. Then we're going to do an inline current test to see if there's a parasitic draw in it. The only thing on at the moment is some very short wires to a bilge pump but at the time that wasn't even connected so we really have no other ancillary things connected to the battery at the moment and the ignition was off so let's see if we can figure it out 13.8 volts so high which is good so obviously it took a charge nicely it's a new battery no reason why not what i'm going to do now sorry this screen's not very bright on this uh Multimeter, 13.8. Let's see what it is with the engine running and the fast idle up. As you can see, starts and runs really nicely. The surface charge on the battery would have gone when we cranked it. So if you've just charged a battery and you're doing a battery test, in a car, for example, they say turn the headlights on just to try and knock that surface charge off, that inflated voltage reading that's not really a true true sort of body reading, I guess you call it. When I turned the outboard off, the voltage actually went up again. So it looks as though the engine, when it's running for spark and EFI, high pressure pump, all that kind of stuff, is drawing power from the battery, not from the regulator rectifier. So let's uh well actually what i'm going to do first is i do want to do the parasitic check to see whether it's drawing power when it's not running apparently when these regulators fail they can both not charge and draw power so let's have a look if any current's going out of the battery at rest all right let's do it on the negative side a voltage check is done in parallel you're seeing how much voltage drops from one point in the circuit to another point and it drops proportional to the resistance so it's a really good way of checking for a high resistance circuit as well as uh, you know seeing how your battery is going now when you do a current check you do it in series so you go from the battery into your multimeter out of your multimeter into the lead so all the current is actually passing through your multimeter because of that, it's fused. So if you draw a big load, like try and crank, you're just gonna blow the fuse in your multimeter. But in this case, I'm just looking if there's a small parasitic drain on the battery. So see what we get. Here, we're in a voltage check. So I'm gonna swap over here to, let's go milliamps to start with. Then I need to change the mode on the multimeter. Not that I have any idea how to use this multimeter yet. Cut, cut. All right, we're back. We're in DC milliamps. It even shows you at the top there which sockets to use for this setting, so that's good. You probably can't see that, but we've got a 28 milliamp drawer all the time. You can see here on the flywheel cover, this yellow fuse here is rectifier regulator. When we first went to start the engine after fixing it, this fuse was blown, hence the spare's gone that's in here. It's not blown now, but it makes me think that it blew because of an issue. So we're starting to see a bit of a pattern of clues and symptoms now. What I'm gonna do now is disconnect the regulator rectifier and see if the parasitic draw disappears, if those 28 milliamps go to zero. Okay, regulator rectifier disconnected. Let's see what we've got in the way of a current draw now. With the regulator disconnected, it's gone down to 1.4 milliamps. 
and the regulator fuse was blown. So I'm starting to think bad regulator, but we'll take it off and do some more tests on it. Got it. Didn't drop it, it's a win. Bit of a rainy day today. I think we're going to be in for a lot of rain over the next five days or so. So let's take a look at this regulator rectifier in the workshop here. This is the regulator rectifier we took out of the boat. You can see here, hopefully, it's actually quite faded the colours, but it has three green wires and then your red and the black. The green wires are coming in from the coils under the flywheel, so you've got your sort of AC current in, and your red and black is your rectified DC current coming out. What we need to do is check whether there's continuity between the red and these various wires in both directions. These rectifiers work via a series of diodes. I've got a separate video on how they work for a single phase rectifier. This is a three phase. Uh, so we need to check whether we've got continuity going between red and a green, and then green and then red. Should only have continuity in one direction. To do this, we're gonna to go to the diode check mode and we're going to put the black wire from our multimeter onto the pin for the red wire. And then we're going to touch all the green wires. In this case, we've got about a half a volt drop, so the current is flowing. We're dropping half a volt over the diode. All of these semiconductor junctions have a voltage drop, so that's normal. Then we've got about a five volt drop over that green wire and about a five volt drop over that green wire. So, so far, everything's pretty normal. Now we're gonna test in the opposite direction. So we've got the red wire from the multimeter to the red wire from the rectifier, and we're gonna put the black wire onto the three greens. Now we're not expecting to get any continuity, but here we've actually got 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0.8. So we pretty much know this is bad from this test. And it's been confirmed by the fact that the new one I put in solved all our problems, but it's nice to confirm it with your multimeter before you go buying new parts. This one is for obviously from a smaller outboard. It's only got two green wires, so it's a single phase, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, and obviously it can't handle the same amount of current, smaller. What we're gonna do now is same thing. Put our black wire into the red and then test the two greens. Here, once again, slightly lower voltage drops or better, you know, lower resistance as such. Well, it's not really resistance with semiconductor drops. I'm sure some electronics expert will tell us exactly what it is, but it's to do with their NP or PN joins. Uh, but we're in the ballpark, around half a volt for both of these. Now, if we swap, we put the red into the red and have a look the other way. We've got open circuit and open circuit. So this is a good, as far as we know, regulator rectifier and the other one is bad. We want about half a volt drop in one direction and no connectivity in the other direction. I have an older video on how these regulator rectifiers work, particularly the little single phase ones. Um, but in this case, it was more about when an outboard presents with these symptoms, how do you go about diagnosing it? This was going flat because A, it wasn't charging and the rectifier was actually drawing current all the time. I didn't really show the multimeter test for the parasitic current draw from the battery very well, mostly due to not having three hands. Now we're on the bench though, I'll quickly grab a piece of paper and just show you the difference between doing the current draw test and the voltage drop test. When we checked the voltage of the battery, sorry if this camera keeps changing focus as I move my hand, I'll take it away in a second. We've got our standard, uh, you know, battery here, and then we've got it on volts mode and we're just putting a positive here, a negative here, and we're getting some sort of reading, 12.8 volts, say. What we're doing here is we're testing the voltage drop across the battery, and in that case, it's the full voltage. If we had a circuit and it had some resistance, and then we had another bit of circuit, had some more resistance and came here, we can test the voltage drop across the whole circuit, in which case it will be battery voltage. We can test how much voltage drops across this resistor, this one, both of them, this kind of thing. So voltage is always done in parallel as a test, i.e. the main circuit and the voltage test. Next bit of homework for me is to figure out how to set this camera to fixed focus. We'll get there. When you measure current, on the other hand, 
you have your battery and there is a circuit, so we get our positive and negative, and it's going off, say, in this case, to our outboard. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to disconnect one of the battery leads. I think I disconnected the negative in the video. And then we're having our multimeter leads like this. This is taken away here. So what happens is all the current flows through the multimeter itself. So this is a test that's done in series. I can't recall exactly, I think it was about 30 milliamp current draw we had. And this is a draw that was happening all the time when the boat was switched off, lights off, everything. So we know some current is going somewhere and this is why the battery is going flat. The regulator rectifier not working is why it's also not charging. So we've got a bit of a double whammy. No charge going in and a parasitic draw coming out all the time. Hopefully that shows you the difference between a voltage test in parallel and a current test in series, and also how to use the diode check mode on your multimeter. Another common way to check for these parasitic drawers in a more complex boat with more wiring, etc., is to hook the multimeter up so you can see the current drawer, maybe have someone looking at that while you go to the fuse box and start pulling fuses. When you suddenly see that parasitic drawer drop or disappear entirely, ideally, uh, you know which circuit's causing it. It might be, you know, a screw that's gone through and it's touching the hull or something like that with a very, you know, high resistance connection. Uh, if it's a really low resistance connection, likely to blow the fuse, but that's quite a good technique for figuring out which circuit is causing the draw. You go, oh, hang on, it's actually coming from my bilge pump circuit. There must be a fault inside the bilge pump or whatever. The thing I like about that technique is it takes you from looking at the boat and going, oh, it could be anywhere, to suddenly going, well, at least I can narrow it down to these five, six, ten circuits, whatever they are. And if that circuit shares multiple things, then you've got to do a bit more, you know, digging down to find out specifically what it is. But it definitely puts you in the ballpark. All right. Well, take care. Thanks for watching. Um, next week, we're definitely going to start that project about converting an outboard to keel cooling. Uh, I didn't really explain much about that on the last video, I was going to say last week, it was only a few days ago because we're doing two small videos this week. Um, but the idea there is that the impeller draws seawater up into an outboard, puts raw water, salt water through the outboard, spits it back out. The plan with this project is to take an outboard and stop all of that happening and have coolant running through the outboard, recirculating through probably some sort of pipes under the boat as like keel cooling or maybe a radiator up on deck that's, you know, getting cooled by the air like a car does. Essentially the same process, just one gets cooled by air, one gets cooled by water. Anyway, that's what we're going to be starting next week, so I hope to catch you then. See ya. Nobody's very happy about this rain situation, are we? Uh, shouldn't have done that, hang on. There you go, Daisy. You can have some that she's not going to take off you, madam. Everyone's hiding from the rain. A bit miserable today. I think it's going to rain for quite a while. Ah, you had your own pile. That's why you had to go to Daisy's pile. Is that the way it works, is it? What's wrong with your pile? Hmm? Come on Daisy, there you go. Let's steal from the rich and give to the poor. Oh, not for you Daffy. Come on Daisy, come this way, that's it. I want to eat a bit of greens while you're there. You two stay out of the wind and rain. It's going to be like this for a while. If I was you, I'd stay under there until bedtime. It's too wet out here. Hopefully it stops so you can make the dash back to your hutch. Anyway, see you in the morning. Look at you all. All hiding from the rain. Oh, hello. So you've decided my arm's the place to sit, have you? Come on. The brave ones get the seed, don't they? 
You could eat a bit faster, that'd be nice. Go on. There you go. Don't fight. 